Today I'm going to review the Parasite Stool Test from Parasites.org, so stay tuned. And do be sure to stay till the end because I will be sharing a discount code for that Parasite Test. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad to see you again. And if you're new here, my name is Amanda Malachewski. I'm a certified functional nutrition gut health coach and a digestive and allergy detective. And I'm also the host of the online program called the Calm Digestion Method. For weekly videos on how to find your personalized diet and supplement plan for IBS and SIBO, please consider subscribing and be sure to click the bell to be notified when I post a new video. A few months ago, someone at parasites.org reached out to me to ask if I would test drive their parasite test kit called the Precise Parasite Home Test Kit. Now as a gut health coach, I definitely encourage my clients to use stool testing as a way to get more data and information about their situation that may be affecting their IBS or SIBO symptoms. And this definitely includes things like parasite testing. Now, when I started as a health coach, I was really curious about whether or not I had a parasite infection because I had these intermittent digestive symptoms, including abdominal pain and cramping and sometimes diarrhea that suggested I could have a parasite but really we don't know until we test. And I know that you might wonder if you have some kind of parasite infection that might be causing your symptoms. So let's review the test kit and find out what I learned in my most recent parasite test. All right, first things first, what exactly is the kit? Well, the parasites.org precise parasite home test kit is a two test sample test kit that you collect at home and then mail back to the lab. It costs $245 and it screens for a wide variety of unicellular parasites, worms, and liver flukes. It also includes some digestive health markers which screen for basically evidence of infection, things like white blood cells and red blood cells and uh, mucus and things like that. So let's take a look at what's inside the test kit. So inside the test kit box, there are, of course, instructions, <laughs> very helpful. Um, there's two vials for the two separate stool collections, also very helpful. Uh, there's a dark red line here, and so when you're collecting your sample, there's liquid in here, you'll add stool to make the liquid come up to the level of the red line. This is kind of standard practice. And then one thing that I love that this company provides is these um, stool collection bags. So these are a biodegradable um, barrier that you can place over the toilet so you can poop on them and then you can flush it when you're done. This is super valuable. Some stool kits do not include something like this and it can be kind of messy and gross <laughs> to do your stool collection. So I love this about this kit. And just to show you all what this looks like, I opened one of these up so you could see it's actually a little bag with stickers that you stick to the toilet seat or the toilet bowl. And then you put a little toilet paper in the bottom and then when you flush this, it dissolves on contact with the water. So this is super cool. Also on the back of the instruction form is the requisition form, of course, that you need to fill out. Very important. Taking samples a couple of days apart for parasite testing can be really valuable. Parasites have cyclical life cycles and a single sample is just one data point and can often miss the parasites. And so this multi-day collection is super helpful to try and get a better data set and hopefully catch some parasites if they're there. So I'm gonna take two collections a few days apart and then I'm gonna mail this kit back to the lab and then once I get the results, I'll share with you what happened. Well, I boxed up my sample and sent it back to the lab via the US Postal Service and in about a week, just about a week exactly, I got my test results back, which I felt like was a little bit fast. Um, it's a little faster than the GI map or some of the other bigger functional medicine stool test labs. So this type of stool test is basically what's called an ova and parasite test. It's looking for either parasite bodies or evidence of their eggs to tell you that there's a parasite infection in your body. The test itself is looking for visual evidence of those specific things. And the lab director, Evan Yerkunitsa, told me that one of the cool things that distinguishes their lab from some of the other labs is that they have actual PhD parasitologists on their team and that their team is headed by this famous parasitologist who has discovered and uh, named uh, something like 70 unique new parasites in his career. And like I said earlier, the test was also looking for candida and other fungi and some other digestive health markers. So I previously had two positive parasite tests. I tested positive for the unicellular parasite Blastocystis hominis two separate times on two separate tests. And I also tested positive for Dientamoeba fragilis as well as Cyclospora species on another test but I did have a negative parasite stool test in 2019 and I have not done any testing since then. 
So just so you can get a sense of what it's like to consult with Evan about your Parasite results, um, here are some snippets from our conversation where he was going over my test results with me. Okay, so it, you are negative for pretty much all the parasites. You did come up positive for a larval nematode. Okay. So that's a baby roundworm. You could think of it kind of like that. Okay. Um, this is, so see how there are these numbers next to the bolded thing, like a one or a oh, yeah. two. So in the case of the larval ne nematode, a one means a light infection. Basically, the long and the short of it is, is that a larval nematode, it doesn't have its sexual organs developed. So we can't say what's what it's going to turn into. Right. So who knows if it's something that, you know, it could be the beginning of an infestation it could be the a dead end infestation like for something like uh like a pig whipworm i don't believe it can become an adult in a human i've seen these in some of our water tests they come back positive whether they be some some well water some city water comes back positive for it and um the general guidance from our lab, like in case, you know, and you want to run this by your doctor, but but we kind of include this just in case, um, you know, someone's personal doctor isn't super familiar with this sort of thing. Uh, the general guidance is that if this were a heavy infection, then you want to treat it. Mm -hmm. it. It has more likelihood to be a causative factor and in, in negative symptoms type of situation. Mm -hmm. But because it's a one out of four, like it's a very light infection, uh, we aren't, you know, we wouldn't necessarily guess that this would be causing issues. These things depend on the context and the exact situation. It's it's certainly like lowest on the totem pole in terms of uh, infections that I would worry about for me, mm -hmm. but everyone's health situation is different. It might be a big deal in uh, your unique situation. Right. So um, tell me a little bit about this um, bacteria reading the normal bacilli. So that's uh that's basically a probiotic bacteria reading. So this one's a little different. So okay, so a zero is negative. Uh, a one would be considered deficient mm -hmm. by our scale. A two is considered adequate, but still a little on the low side. Mm -hmm. Three is considered optimum. Mm -hmm. Four is considered overgrown. Yeah. So we larval nematode, the bacteria, and then the only other thing that came up was candida, mm -hmm. and candida comes up, you know, and very a, a majority of people's stool tests best i can tell um so we kind of do this thing where we differentiate between candida and candida dividing mm -hmm. the general guidance you know out of context sort of general guidance is when the candida is dividing that there's a really good chance it's pathogenic mm -hmm. and causing problems and will get worse until treated yeah uh, so is there anything else that you want to say to people who may be watching um like i'm, I'm just kind of gathering that you know from your perspective, this test can kind of add, shed some new light on the situation for people so that they yep. have more information to work with their doctors to evaluate their digestive symptoms. Is there anything yeah. else you want to add to that about your kind of mission or your intentions for what this test is doing for people? Yeah, that's, I mean, you you pretty much nailed it. We're, we're just trying to uh, support people in their quest for greater health. And, and uh, you know, we're a small boutique lab. We're, we're just trying to support people in our own little unique way that isn't necessarily covered to the same degree in other, in other testing. This test is kind of three tests in one to a little, to a degree. Um, so we have the parasite, we have the, the fungi and yeast, mm -hmm. and then we have the gut health markers. Mm -hmm. Some of the most valuable things are that people can see if they have, you know, suspected yeast or candida type infections, the mm -hmm. gut health markers, we can see, you know, heavy mucus, uh, red blood cells, that one's really valuable. And then a little little bit of a idea of their probiotic bacteria. So there you have it. I potentially have an infestation of nematodes and a little bit of candida overgrowth. No surprise there. So here are some overall observations and summaries of what I thought of this test. I really enjoyed nerding out with Evan about parasites, and I was pretty intrigued with my larval nematode results. Um, you know, as you heard in the consultation, he felt like it wasn't really necessarily something that was important to deal with, but I did have a brief conversation with my naturopath about that, and she kind of begged to differ. So probably next time I meet with her, we will talk about what to do from there. So I'm excited just to have that piece of information to work with as I move forward with my own health care. And that said, here's a kind of summary of what I see as the benefits and downsides of this test. 
The first major benefit is that this test is really a parasite specific lab test and that's kind of unusual and really helpful. I think some of the other tests maybe fall a little short of finding parasites very well. And alongside of that is that the lab employs these two parasitology experts to help read the results of their test samples. I really love that the test collects two separate samples and also that they encourage you to collect near the full moon. Um, we do know that parasites are typically more active near the full moon. So um, I really appreciated that guidance and really appreciate that there's two separate samples as two separate data points to try and get better information. Consultation and interpretation with Evan is included with your sample. So I think that's another plus side to have somebody to talk with your results about who really knows a lot about these things and has seen a lot of test results. I feel like the digestive health markers that they provide may just help provide some more context clues about what's going on, so I appreciate those are on, that those are on there. The test costs a little bit less than the GI map and the doctor's data or the GI FX tests. And the test also does offer bacterial testing or water sample testing to go alongside with your parasite results, especially if something parasite-wise comes up, you might be wondering, is my water safe to drink? So that's a benefit is you can send a water sample back to the same company. Downsides as I see them, there's just a couple. One is that I think the cost is still a little bit on the high side. I mean, functional labs are expensive, so it's always a little bit painful to shell out that $250 or so for a test. I also felt like the results page was a little bit hard to read and I'm an experienced test reader, so I imagine it might be a little harder for a regular client. That said, the company again does provide consultation and help reading that. And the third downside that I can see is that the test really only looks for parasites and yeasts. So if you have some other kind of problem, bacteria especially, this test is going to miss that problem. So, you know, that's, you know, potentially one reason to choose a different stool test. But beyond that, especially if you're really looking for parasites, again, I think this is a really great value. So I'm curious to know if you've had any parasite testing before and what happened on it. Please tell me about it in the comments. So I hope this review has helped you become more aware of the parasites.org uh, test kit and what kind of value it might be able to provide you as you're trying to learn more about what might be causing your digestive symptoms. And if you would like to purchase a test kit, I have left a link down below this video in the description box that provides you with a $15 off discount. So go check that out if you're at all interested in doing the test. Now I do want to let you know that if you have been needing support with evaluating what kinds of underlying infections might be involved in your IBS or SIBO symptoms, this is definitely something that I support my clients with inside my Calm Digestion Method program. And the program is really all about how to leverage the best strategy to resolve your digestive symptoms and find your personalized plan. So if that's something that you've been needing help with, I really wanna encourage you to grab a free copy of my Roadmap to Gut Recovery. This is a short little e-guide that shares the exact strategy that I share with my clients inside the Calm Digestion Method program that can help get you started thinking about your uh, digestive issues in a new way and hopefully make some good progress with them. You can grab a free copy of that roadmap by going to confluencenutrition.com forward slash roadmap. I will leave a link for that below this video and it's here on the screen as well for you. All right, let me know if this video was helpful for you by clicking like or leaving me a comment and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And next you might want to check out this video I made a, quite a while ago about parasite home remedies. So check that out and I'll see you next time.